it's never too late for a new beginning. Welcome one of our favorites, O.S. Hawkins. Good to have you back, Thank O.S. Thank you, Governor. Glad to be here, it's all right. The code books have just taken off, it's, I mean. It's been amazing, it really has. We're, did you ever envision when you wrote the first book? No, no the, the first one was uh, called the Joshua Code. I, I decided there were 52 verses of scripture uh -huh. that every believer ought to know. And so they took, you take one a week, it's a devotional book throughout a year, and it just, uh, it took off. The, the secret to them is in the subtitles. The next one was the Jesus Code, 52 scripture questions. Hmm. Every believer ought to answer. You know, I believe there are 52 questions that are asked in the Bible that before we get to heaven, we ought to have an answer for. And then the newest, the Nehemiah Code. Here's, we're about to begin a new year. Uh, it's never too late for a new beginning. Everybody's looking for a new beginning. Some people are looking for a new beginning after divorce or after the death of a spouse or they've lost a job or they've got a new opportunity or uh, everybody's looking for a new beginning. And so the, the good news of the Bible is it's never too late for a new beginning. What is, what is it that most people need and they sometimes think, well, it's too late. There's no point in me even trying. Yeah. What, yeah. what is it? It's never too late. And I think the, the, the first section of it is about the, the fact that rebuilders get started right. That's the hardest part of everything. If we're going on a diet, worst part's trying to get started. If we know we need to get in an exercise program, the hardest part is getting over there and getting started. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same is true with uh, rebuilding our lives, but uh, it's, it's never too late for a new beginning. The, what we're trying to do with the Code Series, uh, Governor, is not get people into the Word of God, but get the Word of God into people. Mm. And when that happens, it can transform lives. That's perfect because Nehemiah was all about rebuilding, right. taking something that had been destroyed, and saying, we're gonna build it back. So that, that's the right. concept of- uh, Yeah, he wasn't a preacher, he wasn't a prophet, he was a civil servant, had a job, good job, retirement benefits, left all of it and went back to Jerusalem to rebuild the broken walls and the, and the burned gates, rallied the people to do it, uh, built a team spirit among them, uh, didn't let obstacles keep him down and finished strong and, and got it done. One of the things that I have admired about all of the books you've done in the Code series you don't keep the profits. All of it goes to helping ministers who have retired and are barely eking out a living. Right. Uh, we, we, we have a lot of good and godly people out there that are seem, seemingly forgotten. And that's uh, pastors uh, and their widows in their declining years. They, most of them pastored out in the crossroads where they never had enough money to live on, much less prepare for retirement. Most of them lived in a church-owned parsonage and had to get out of it. And uh, now in their declining years, they're down there at the poverty level. And so at Guidestone, we have a, we have a program called Mission Dignity. Mm. We're on a mission to bring dignity to these forgotten folks. And 60% of them are widows now, pastors. One little lady, seven-year-old widow wrote me the other day and said, I get to eat at night now and it's not just a piece of toast. Oh, wow. So uh, 10 years ago, we were able to give them $50 a month. We raise so much money now that the neediest among them get $630 a month which is a tremendous help from them. And all the royal, I believe that's one of the reasons God has blessed the, the Code Series because it's sold over a million and a half copies now and all of those royalties go to those people in need. Well, the beautiful thing is, I mean, it, it, the, the books are delightful. They're easy to read. Uh, they're written, they're not written to a theologian. They're right. written to a, just an ordinary person who comes home from a day at work or gets right. up early to go to work. And the books are simple and the message is pure and clear. Uh, but I do think God has blessed the writing of these books mm -hmm. and the distribution because there are so many ministers in need. You know, you were talking about pastors getting evicted after living in church housing. Right. Uh, you know, politicians do too. I got evicted from the governor's <laughs> mansion uh, in Arkansas after almost 11 years. Uh, I found out that they wouldn't let me stay. <laughs> they, they moved me out. Well, there's so, another house we all wish you were living in. God tried for that one too. <laughs> I never even got into that hey, one. It's never too late. Yes, for it a new is. Beginning. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things for which it's too late. No. Uh, well, tell me what is an obstacle that a lot of people are going to face when they try to start something new. Let's, let's take forgiveness. Because a lot of people have bitterness and anger in their hearts towards someone who hurt right. them. Maybe been years ago. Right. But they can't get over it. And they have to. Uh, uh, forgiveness is so vital. You know, in most relationships that are broken, there are two parties. There's an offending party and an offended party. And most of them, there's a little bit of both of us in both of them. But two things have to happen. The offending party must have a 
really a spirit of repentance. Mm. They have to be not just sorry. Repentance is not being sorry. We've done something. The rich young ruler went away sorrowful, but he didn't repent. It's not just regretting that I did that. Pontius Pilate washed his hands and regretted his deed, but he didn't. And it's not just reform. Judas reformed, took the 30 pieces of silver back. But repentance is a, really a true change of mind that affects a change of our volition and a change of our actions. So there must be a repentant heart. But on the part of the offended party, there must be a receptive heart. And you know, you and I both pastors for a long time, and I know you like I have dealt with a lot of people and many of the ro ro broken relationships that never got mended. It wasn't because the offending party wasn't repentant. It was because that offended party just couldn't bring themselves to forgive and have a, have a place of new beginnings. You know, when I see people that, that have these broken relationships for offense, and, and one of the things that becomes clear, sometimes I've heard this. Now, if I've offended you, yeah. I mean, that is not no, it's a not. confession of no. sin. That is not in any way taking no. responsibility. No. It, it's most often heard by politicians. Right. If I have offended anyone right. with my words. Well, obviously you offended yeah. somebody. That's why they're mad at you. You just offended them. <laughs> yeah, you just offended them even again. How do you avoid that? Uh, how do you avoid that? You just come clean uh, and realize that, that uh, nothing we can do can atone for our sin, that Christ has taken our sin and, in his own body and forgiven it. Uh, for those of us who've come to him in simple childlike faith and who just, as you just said, just don't say, uh, you know, if I've offended you, I'm sorry. The truth is I, I've, I have sinned. It's not if I've sinned. You know, some people think sin's some little vice that we can just laugh off. Mm. Uh, some people think it's something we can minimize by saying, well, it's, it's not as bad as so-and-so's or excuse by saying, well, everybody's doing it. It's so serious, it necessitated the cross. And uh, we, we don't come to forgiveness. We don't receive forgiveness from Christ by saying, Lord, if I've sinned, I mean, not only does he know we've sinned, we know we've sinned. Well, I want to make sure you come back about this time next year because my guess is you're working on another book. I, well, I am. You want to it's tell gonna, us? Yes, it's going to be the Sarah Code, 50 two ways to respond in Christian character when you've been <laughs> insulted and onslaught. <laughs> so I know a Sarah who might yeah, be a that, model for that. She might be that. interested in that. <laughs> Actually, yes. Uh, we, we've got we, we've got another we've got a, we've got another one coming out. We, the Christmas code is out right now. Which oh, I have a copy of that. Small little thing that people use as an evangelistic tool mm. also at Christmas. But uh, the next one's going to be called the Passion Code. Mm. It's uh, got a hundred days with Jesus. Wow. And uh, it's about God with us. He came in, in the incarnation. It's about God for us at Calvary, what, what the cross really means. And then the, the, the last part of it's God in us, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So you're going to be back next year. We're going to talk about the Passion love Code. It. If you don't, we know where you live. I We're going to come it. find you. Better show up. All right, OSL's new book is The Nehemiah Code. It is never too late for a new beginning. And it's not too late to get this book before Christmas from major booksellers, or you can visit oshawkins.com. And I want to remind you, the proceeds from this book, and this is important, are going to go to help some ministers, some of whom may have helped you, ministered to you, and cared for you, and now they are their widows are in desperate need of help, and this will be a great help to them.